What's up, ladies and gents? Coming back at you with the same bottle of water from earlier, because I have not been drinking my good liquids. <sighs> been drinking me some orange cream L81, son. This is like some of the best stuff ever. I don't know if I've ever reviewed it on the channel or not, but I got to sometime. It's awesome. So, definitely check it out. Anyhow, of course we're going to be continuing with Scooby-Doo Goes Hollywood. This, of course, is not a VHS tape. This is a snapper case DVD. Very early DVD, I think. Uh, this is released in 2002, uh, which is still pretty early for DVD, maybe only a decade in, uh, and probably only a couple, maybe the year that they became really uh, affordable. Got the spine here, nice stuff, snapper. You can unsnap it and got that cool cover art. Got the cover art inside as well with the chapters and then there, of course, is the DVD. Um, I'll go ahead and say this is not one of my favorites, but uh, we're just going to review it anyway. So we open up with a typical Scooby-Doo scenario and a creepy raven not credited to anybody. Again, I think it's Frank Welker. I want to attribute every animal in this movie to Frank Welker that's not credited to somebody. Just want to go ahead and credit it to Frank Welker. I could be wrong, but... Anyway, the film soon after that just kind of goes completely in the opposite direction of any previous Scooby material. Uh, it's kind of led by this fame-hungry version of Shaggy, uh, and Scooby decides to just sort of seek stardom in Hollywood to really no degree of success. Uh, Scooby is, of course, exactly the same as he's always been. He's lovable, bumbling, and hungry as ever. And played, of course, by Don Messick. He's great. His coloration's a little off. Uh, he's a little bit darker than he used to be in these earlier incarnations. Shaggy, though, looks, looks exactly the same. Sorry. He looks exactly the same, but he acts totally different. Um... He's jealous and vindictive and fame-hungry. And honestly, though Casey Kasem's performance is good, the character becomes almost too hateful to endure throughout the film. Uh, then after that, music starts. Scooby-Doo Goes Hollywood is actually a musical. At a time when musicals were sort of at their lowest, the film is packed with big songs. Even more unbelievable, though, is that they're pretty darn catchy and good. Uh, not all of them, mind you, but they're still worth a listen, especially Scooby-Doo, We're Missing You. That is the most heartwarming out of all the songs and just really encapsulates the whole movie. Very good stuff there. As for the characters, besides Shaggy and Scooby, the rest of the gang is fine. Frank Welker's great, as always. Love Frank Welker uh, as Fred. Heather North is good as Daphne, but maybe she's a little bit wooden sometimes. Sometimes her lines don't come off quite the way I think they should. Velma is in the Patricia Stevens era. Patricia Stevens plays her. Uh, and because of that, she's got kind of an annoying voice, I'm sad to say. It's pretty bereft of emotion, and there's not much saving the jokes she makes. So, uh, not a big fan of Velma in this, but, I mean, Pat... Uh, Pat Stevens did do some good work as Velma. I, I just don't think it's the best here. Um, so, like I was saying, uh, characters. Maybe the most important character of the non-gang members is, uh, is the network president named CJ. He's played by Rip Taylor. Uh, you just gotta love him for that foppish voice. You know, he sounds really gay, but uh, you gotta love him. You gotta love him. Uh, there's also this cowboy played by Michael Bell, and he works fine, but um, Bell's other character, Jackie Carlson, which is kind of a Jimmy Carson knockoff slash reference, it's, it's a little stronger. Not, not much to say about that, honestly. Uh, because this is a musical, I should probably credit the credited singers for their work, which is admittedly very good, very good singing in this movie. Uh, even by people who aren't credited as singers, uh, people that just sing and are already characters. They usually do good jobs uh, in this movie. But the credited singers include Edie Lehman, Paul DeCourt, Michael Redman, Debbie Hall, and Robert Tebow. 
Uh, the rest of the voice cast includes Jenny McSwain as Carrie, a girl fan um, in one of the most heartwarming moments of the film, just all these people coming together to say, we love you, Scooby, uh, which is really, really great. Um, but she plays, uh, uh, she plays the girl fan. She also plays the executive secretary. Uh, the great Pat Fraley, the great voice actor, um, plays a brother, a guard, and an announcer. I couldn't really even pick out his performance, to be totally honest. Um, but he is a great voice actor. Joan Gerber as Laverne and Shirley, uh, reference Lavon. Lavon and Scooby, Laverne and Shirley, that kind of thing. Uh, so she plays Lavon. She also plays just a random woman and a waitress. Uh, Marilyn Schreffler is Cherie. Who, by the way, just while we're talking about the characters and the actors, she's really creepy because there's some implications that she wants to have sex with Scooby. So there's bestiality going on in this romantic song, romantic quote-unquote, that they're talking about, that they're doing in the movie. It's pretty creepy, gotta admit. So uh, <laughs> there's that. Uh, she also plays... Uh, uh, a character named Sis, and a receptionist. Seriously, like, that Cherie character, very over-sexualized, too. Pretty creepy stuff going on there, to be honest, guys. Uh, and then finally, we, finally, uh, we have Stan Jones as a director, a VP, and a pretty funny Scottish terrier. Uh, so, pretty good voice cast overall. Most of them do at least an alright job. There are instances where... The dialogue isn't good, and the actors going along with them aren't doing their best either. So it kind of, there's some grading, not very good stuff, but it's it's still there. And, uh, it's okay. Um, of course, as huge of a Frank Welker fan I, I am, I just, I like to think he played virtually all the animals. And I even have this theory that he played the young Scooby shown in one of these sequences. There's a sh shot where... Uh, Scooby-Doo, not just a shot, but a whole sequence where Scooby-Doo's a puppy, and it's when they're going to pick up Scooby. Shaggy's actually really mean to him in that scene, which is kind of sad, but anyway, he's supposed to be a puppy, and he's got this sort of little, little kind of voice, uh, which I realize isn't tough to do, but it sounds almost exactly like Skeeter in The Muppet Babies, who was played by Frank Welker. So, I like to think that it's Frank Welker. Uh, it totally could have been Don Messick, it probably was, but I like to think that it was. I have no hard evidence, but if nothing else, it makes me happy to hear Frank Welker sing, which he does in the movie when they're doing um, uh, Scooby-Doo, We're Missing You, which is just really, it's wonderful to hear. Uh, he even has a whole section in that, mo in, in that uh, song there. The music, as I've said, is pretty good. Uh, there's not a ton of real hits here, but they're almost all pleasant. Uh, the composer, Hoyt Curtin, pulls a lot of powerful strings, puts a lot of these powerful strings and brass into the soundtrack, which really does sound big and just great. Um, the animation is equally big with a lot more movement, more detail, and more popping colors, which seems to be a product of the higher budget. I mean, just looking at the animation credits on here will tell you that much. Uh, the movie definitely looks great. It's helmed by director Ray Patterson. Uh, visually, this movie is fantastic. Couldn't say more, more about it as far as just it being good. It's much less limited animation. There's some Tex Avery style stuff in here in, in, in a way. Uh, much more movement and more kinetic and cool. It's just, everything just looks really good. Like I said, uh... Scooby's a little bit darker than I think he needs to be, but that's not a big issue, honestly. But now we get to the writing, uh, and there's a lot to say here. So, firstly, as I think I've already gone over, the, the characters are almost perfect, except for Shaggy. Uh, I don't like what they did to him, but I understand why. But it's still sad to see him in the state in which he winds up at the end. He's just kind of, he's kind of kicked out of the van, you know? Just, uh, he's ch chasing after the mystery machine, rolled up in this big old carpet or something like that. It's kind of, it's kind of sad to see him. Um, still, uh, the film has a lot of good characters. 
Um, especially the ones that are like the references to other media at the time, especially the groove based on the fawns from Happy Days. Kind of a fun little sequence there. Uh, in fact, the major point of this movie is Scooby inserting himself into these different popular movies and TV shows at the time. Uh, most of them are pretty fun and clever, but some don't really work. Uh, probably the best part is their parody of The Sound of Music. It's really short, but it's really, really funny. Um, often the sort of original movies that Scooby is in are pretty dumb, to be honest. Um, what really works for me, though, is the overarching theme. And that's, this is really where I, where I start to like this movie. Um, Shaggy's always trying to get Scooby to go in a different direction. But Scooby's always pulled back to what he does best by the rest of the gang, and by his real fans. Those scenes are really the best of the movie. The, the problem is they don't show that enough. Uh, the scene in which Scooby is begged to come back by his friends and fans is just so beautiful and moving. I, I, I usually get a little teary-eyed. Uh, I didn't this time around because I was trying to write as it was going along, but I usually do get pretty teary-eyed. And uh, But the writers just don't show enough of it, honestly. They just don't show enough of that emotional good stuff. Um, overall, the screenplay by Dwayne Poole and Dick Robbins is kind of a mixed bag. Not entirely bad, but not entirely good. Uh, honestly, though, the movie has good songs, good animation, and mostly good acting, and it's still ultimately kind of a flop. Uh, where the Hanna-Barbera Superstars 10 films were too long, this is kind of too short. Uh, there's not near enough here to justify a movie, at least not without more emotional involvement. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy the movie, and I really enjoy its message, but ultimately it kind of falls flat as a film. I still say that if you're a completist, this is a good film to watch once and then put into the pile, but it's not one you'll revisit often. It's memorable for a few aspect, aspects, but it's not very good, um... I'll give it probably 6 out of 10 stars. This is pretty much the only way you can own this, except maybe digitally. Um, there's probably a better DVD than this. Uh, just it not being a, slap, a snapper case. There might be one that's not a snapper case, you know. Um, this has got a lot of special features on it. There's the Scooby-Doo Network game, which I haven't uh, watched or played. I mean, Mystery Inc. Yearbook is pretty cool. It's got some interviews with the creators of Scooby-Doo and some of the actors from Scooby-Doo as well. Uh, Get the Picture, How to Draw Scooby-Doo is okay. Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase music video and America Loves Scooby-Doo music video uh, and trailers of various Scooby-Doo and other family favorites. Uh, kind of cool. Uh, not, not great special features, but really the star of the show here is... The Mystery Inc. yearbook. I actually think I enjoyed that more than I enjoyed the movie. Uh, I like the movie, alright, but it's not great. So that's really all I can say about this. It's kind of a failure, kind of not, but it's it's Scooby-Doo. I have to own it. It's okay. Uh, I will watch it maybe once every couple of years. I, I'm, I've probably on average watched it once a year just because because of my Scooby Marathon day and, you know, stuff like this where I review it or um, for just some random reason. But still, Scooby-Doo goes Hollywood. All right, movie. Not great. Six out of ten. Um, not the worst thing, but a step down from the Hanna-Barbera Super Superstars 10 movies, in my opinion. This is okay. And this is, of course, going back in time from... Scooby-Doo meets the Boo Brothers. I will eventually go forward in time with Scooby-Doo and the uh, Ghoul School. That's it. Scooby-Doo and the Ghoul School. So, rock on. If you like, subscribe. Talk to you later. This will probably be the last video of the day. I'm going to send you out on drinking the rest of this water. Got to go to work here in a few minutes, so... Bye-bye, guys.